What's up everyone, CP Morty here back with another video and this is the HTC U Ultra. Now HTC's always had a soft spot for me and many other people in the phone and tech world. Making the first Android phone through to a number of Nexus and Pixel devices, HTC's always been at the heart of the Android ecosystems. With epic launches like the HTC One M7 back in 2013, to many other partner deals that they've had with big companies like Google to make the Nexus and Pixel lineup. It really does show that the manufacturer can change the landscape with some quick software, solid build and overall a really nice design. But here we are in 2017 with the same manufacturer, same premium build and same quick software but is the phone really that good? Now in today's video we do have the black model in house with the black and orange D-band skin on this guy which will be linked down below. Also too, this hump right here is not actually the phone, rather it's a magnet that I've slipped under the skin to allow me to mount the phone to a magnetic holder without the need for a case or magnets within the phone. So do keep that in mind that this hump will not be present on your particular phone. Now with a market filled with Galaxy S8s and LG G6s and other phones that really push the envelope, the HTC U Ultra kind of feels like a bit of a letdown. With a massive 5.7 inch display clocking in at 2560 by 1440, with an additional 2.05 inch 1040 by 160 p display, the U Ultra is definitely large and in charge when it comes out of your pocket. Though it won't be out of your pocket for very long thanks to the lackluster 3000 mAh battery. Back in 2013, a 3000mAh battery would have been revolutionary, however today a phone of its size should really have a larger battery and doesn't really stack up with other phones with even larger screens. Though with that being said, despite its smaller size, it actually managed to power through my whole day and if you are a medium to light user of a phone, you should be able to use this phone all day, no worries. However, for those of us who are more heavy users or just longer days, you may need to do a quick splash and dash on the charger at lunchtime to make it through the evening. But thanks to Qualcomm Quick Charging, this should not be an issue. And definitely a battery bank is recommended to carry with you. However, more on the battery in just a moment. Design-wise, this is an absolutely beautiful piece of hardware. With a really nice liquid glass and metal framework, they work together to provide a unique experience like no other. This year, HTC really did change things up with their design, ditching metal in favour of glass, which some people do like and some people aren't the biggest fan of. Whilst it does definitely bring durability down and fingerprints up, one cannot deny that the phone is an absolutely beautiful design when it's not full of fingerprints, dust or scratches. Especially in person, the phone actually looks almost wet. It's really nice how they design the phone and the reflectivity is really awesome in person. However, it can be an absolute pain to try and film, especially for this video. Up front, we find ourselves the aforementioned 5.7 inch display clocking in at again 2560 by 1440. And whilst it is an AMOLED, if I actually didn't do this review and if I didn't actually look into the display, I would swear that this thing is AMOLED. The blacks are inky as anything and the colors are vibrant and punchy and honestly could almost pass off as an AMOLED style screen. However, with that being said, it is an LCD display and backlight bleed is present. However, I only found a very faint amount in the bottom left corner. However, it's almost undetectable. So I did get very lucky with the LCD panel on my particular unit. At launch, there was a revision of this phone that actually had a fair bit of backlight bleed underneath the camera. However, it looks like in recent months, HTC's actually gone ahead and fixed this somehow, whether it be some sort of firmware update or some sort of design change, they've actually gone ahead and actually fixed this backlight bleeding issue, especially on my unit. We also too get Gorilla Glass 5 covering up this screen, which is actually very nice. However, I have seen numerous reports of this Gorilla Glass 5 not being the highest cut of the glass, so a screen protector is recommended for this display. Luckily, I have not managed to scratch mine yet, but apparently this phone is really easy to scratch, so do keep that in mind. Down the bottom of the display, we also do get ourselves a capacitive home button that is flanked by a menu and back button, which do appear to be a little bit small. It almost looks like they've gone ahead and gotten buttons off previous phones and sort of just glued them in place. They don't really seem 
well big enough for a phone of this size. They do seem very small and there is a ton of bezel around them that could be used for much bigger buttons. Both the home button and also two back and multitask buttons could be a lot larger. However, with that being said, I never really found myself pushing the wrong buttons or struggling with them, so they did definitely work. However, it would have just been nicer for some bigger buttons at that. The home button also too includes a fingerprint scanner, which is extremely fast and accurate. However, if you are coming from a Huawei phone, you may notice it being a little bit slower and a little bit less accurate as Huawei is one of the leaders in fingerprint readers. Rounding out the design of the front of the phone, we obviously get ourselves the front facing camera, which we'll touch on in the camera part, but it is a 16 megapixel shooter. We also do get ourselves the front facing microphones in the glass and also to the front facing speaker, which works in tandem with the base speaker to go ahead and give you some louder audio. Whilst it's not the loudest on the market, it is better than having just a single speaker setup. Flipping around to the back, the back is actually extremely simple with a single large glass panel only broken by the camera and flash and also to laser module. It is an extremely simple back. However, again, I do have the D-Brand skin on my guy, which features a very nice orange logo right there and also to a nice carbon fiber cover. And again, that magnet that allows me to mount it to car mounts and other mounts and really anything else that is magnetic. Now, speaking of the colors of this phone, I do have the black model, but it also too comes in blue, a silver white color, and also to a pink. However, some markets don't have all the phones, but I have to say in person, the black is extremely nice to look at. However, with that being said, looking at the phone, there is one thing you do need to keep in mind, and that is the light around you. Depending on what light is on top of this guy will depend on what color reflects out of this. A lot of videos on the internet do show sort of a green tint to this phone, which makes it really, really gross looking, especially the black color. However, if you go outside and hold the phone, it actually has a blue tint to it. And if you sit under a light that is very magenta, it has a magenta shift to it. So it really depends on what light is being shot at the phone as to what what colors will reflect out of it. So for some B-roll shots, you may see a green tint. Sometimes you may see a red, magenta, or really anything like that. It'll come down to what light is actually hitting the phone. So the best thing I can recommend you do is just go down to a store and take a look at the phone in person, because I have to say, it is way more striking in person than what it looks like on the camera. Jumping out of the hood, we find ourselves some decent specifications, including the Qualcomm Snapdragon 821 CPU with the Adreno 530 GPU, 4GB of RAM, 64 or 128GB of storage with micro SD expansion up to 256GB. However, with that being said, we don't exactly have a larger card on the market yet, so it's going to be a little bit hard to test to see whether we can get any more storage out of this, guys. But 256 plus 64 gigs of storage or 128 is a really nice storage option. Not to mention there's also to an option of the 128 gig edition that features Sapphire Crystal, making this phone one of the most durable on the market. Do keep in mind that not all versions are Sapphire Crystal and the Sapphire Crystal does cost a little bit more than the regular edition, but it is nice to see that HTC is one of the first manufacturers to include a full Sapphire Crystal display and also to rear housing, which brings durability quite up. Camera wise, we get ourselves a 12 megapixel shooter on the rear as well as a 16 megapixel selfie shooter that has an ultra pixel mode that allows you to shoot at a lower resolution but acquire more light. As we can see here, the front facing camera is actually really decent, however it doesn't feature any OIS, so holding it like this and trying to do some hand actions do result in some shaky video. Would have been nice to see OIS here, and also too there is unfortunately no 4K or higher than 1080p recording. Even though the sensor theoretically could go ahead and shoot that high, unfortunately it doesn't have that option. Not to mention also too, well that wide angle, it is a super wide angle lens allowing you to get quite a lot into the shot even though, well, I'm holding the phone really, really close. If you do try and reach out, you're gonna actually get quite a lot into the shot of your selfie style video. With that being said, back to the actual review and back to our proper bigger microphone. That 3D audio feature is actually really, really cool and is really epic, especially when you're at an event or somewhere outside and you can really hear where the sound is coming from. The camera app itself is actually very intuitive and has a ton of features that do definitely make sense. And there's even a cool little stealth recording mode that allows you to start recording a video and actually hit the little screen on button and now no one can see you're actually recording. This is 
is great for situations where you may be in public and people don't want you recording them and you can just easily turn off the screen and it looks like you're not even recording anyone. I really do like this idea and wish a lot more other phones had this type of feature. There's also to a pro mode thanks to this phone running the latest edition of Android giving us access to the new camera API which allows for raw photos and much more deeper control over the images we do take and thanks to that raw option I can go ahead and take photos in raw, edit them up in Lightroom and have some really awesome photos. The images out of this guy is actually so good that Shutterstock and a number of other stock video sites and photo sites actually accepted photos from this phone as sellable items in their marketplace which shows just how good quality this phone is or how good quality the photographer is taking the actual photos. And as I always say, it's not always about the hardware you're using and it's also too more about the skills and techniques that you use to get the photos you take. So let's take a look at some images and you can be the judge of the quality of these photos. In day-to-day -day usage, I found this phone actually a pleasant experience. Android 7.0 paired up with a very light addition of Sense made it a fantastic and reliable phone to use. Just like all HTC phones, it always felt that one step ahead. No matter whether I was multitasking, watching videos, browsing applications or anything like that, everything that I wanted to do just felt ready to go. Nothing felt like it was loading and I really had no problems there. The only time I ever experienced a slowdown was playing back a YouTube video, downloading updates and shooting 4K video at the same time. That's the only thing I could do to experience any type of a slowdown. Otherwise, my entire time using this phone was extremely fast, buttery smooth and bug free and everything just worked so well. It's actually one of the first Android phones that I've used as a daily driver where I didn't actually change the animation speeds in the developer options. Usually every Android phone that I get, I always have to turn up the animation speeds because they're just too slow or the phone just feels like it's loading for weight too long. In day-to-day -day tasks like email, web browsing, YouTube, Netflix, anything else I could think of, it was super fast and flew through it. And also two 3D games were just fine to go ahead and play, no matter what quality or what settings the games were running it. It absolutely flew through it and if this phone is anything like previous HTC phones, it's going to be staying this fast for a very, very, very long time. Finally, on the software front when using this phone, other than the apps all being extremely well designed and well put together with very little bugs, I also too found this to be one of the best launches I've used on a phone. HTC's really got my attention with their Sense launcher and everything just sort of works without any sort of bloat. They've done a really good job with this iteration of Sense, keeping many stock Android elements, but also to adding enough features to make it custom enough and also to add more features that make sense and really do work. Gone are the days of Android skins that just add features for the sake of adding features, this version of Sense really does an awesome job at giving a unique look to Android without really going overboard at it. Notifications are exactly the same as they would be on stock Android, the settings application is mostly similar to the stock version of Android with a few tweaks here and there, and a lot of applications like the clock have a nice little HTC skin over the top of it and overall really does pull together for a clean experience. Software updates came reasonably quickly with my unit receiving the March security patch in March, which was really cool to see. And even though we're in June now at the time of recording, I would leave it a little bit longer before I start to judge them about their security update times. And whilst we're not on the latest version of Android 7.0.1, I do expect HTC to push out the next iteration of Android when that does come down the line. But overall, software updates are actually really on point. And at this point, this phone sounds like a really great phone. Fast software, decent updates, good builds, a ton of support without breaking the bank. What's not to like? Well, there is a few things that aren't really the best on this phone. Number one being the headphone jack or well, lack of a headphone jack. It is 2017, but we are not in the future yet and ditching headphone jacks is something that we should not be doing at the moment. And unfortunately, the U Ultra has made this step and can be a deal breaker for many people on the market. It does ship with an extremely high quality pair of USonic headphones, but at the end of the day, if you already own your high quality pair of headphones, 
it really doesn't make much sense going and buying USB-C options. Also too, HTC is definitely dragging their feet in terms of USB-C to audio support, as you can't plug in an adapter unless it's from HTC. You just get an error message saying that it is unsupported. Unfortunately though, we have to spend the 15 or so dollars to buy the HTC adapter for it to actually work, which is a major disappointment. Another major disappointment is definitely that battery. Whilst it did get me through every single day I threw at it, GPS navigation and Wi-Fi tethering really did kill the battery and just using the phone with a lot of screen on time will see you run out. You'll definitely have to be charging up at around lunchtime to afternoon tea time to actually make it through the entire day. However, a battery bank is almost always recommended and I recommend this guy from Blitzwolf that actually allows you to use Qualcomm Quick Charge with this phone. So you can have a small little battery bank that will juice up your phone in just a matter of minutes, which should see you powering through the rest of the day. So I'll leave a link down that description box if you want to grab this power bank. And that sort of leads me to my final thoughts on the phone. Design wise, HTC continues to make big, beautiful looking phones with its large and in charge 69% screen to body ratio, demanding large hands. The screen is one of the best LCD displays I've ever laid my eyes on with super inky blacks and super vibrant and punchy colors, and it even rivals AMOLED displays. The camera on the back of this guy is one of the best in 2017, and thanks to it sharing many features that are found also too on the Pixel phones, you can definitely say that optics on this phone is one of the best HTCs ever offered. Processor and performance wise, absolutely smashed it out, and the software feels like it's one step ahead of you, and I never experienced any lag or stuttering like what you might expect from the Samsung and other phone sides. The second screen on this phone is cool to have, but really something not worth mentioning in a review, as it does offer some nice little shortcuts and information here and there, but at the end of the day, it's just something I really didn't use too much and was nice to see some extra information here, but shouldn't be a make it or break it decision. The smaller battery got me through the day, however, a lack of a headphone jack was definitely a sore point for me, and overall though, I have to say, even with those downsides, it was still a pleasant experience for me. For what it is, the U Ultra is a fantastic phone, but with other phones coming on the market with near bezel displays, massive two day battery lives, and no camera humps, the U Ultra doesn't really stand out from the crowd, and that is one of its biggest problems. It's great at what it does, it has beautiful software and an epic design, but it just can't stand out in a market of phones that are really pushing the envelope. So there we go, the U Ultra. Kind of cool phone, but doesn't live up to some of the hype that some people are giving it. It has found its way to be my daily driver and I absolute love using it, so do let me know down in the comment sections if you have any questions about this phone. Otherwise guys, down in the comment sections also too let me know what you think of this phone. Do you think it's just a waste of space or do you think it has some value if it was released a little bit earlier? Thanks guys for watching and I will catch you all in the next one.